Talking about a very short little video actually, a lot of people have been asking me about my professional gear that I use in terms of photography and videography and um, let me give you a little bit of a progress update. So I've had the pleasure in the last, goodness gracious me, since I was roughly 13 years old to do photography, my mom was a, a professional photographer, of course I am now as well for many years and I'm now 50 so I've spent a long time taking photographs and um, uh, you'll see that I don't really restrict myself to one type of photography. If you look at my Instagram account, uh, there's just some posts that I've done with certain types of photography that I've made. If you go down to the description, you can see my Instagram account is the at obipixel with an underscore um, in the account name. And um, I've got over 100,000 subscribers, so it's pretty cool. But the main thing is, what do I do professionally? So for many years, I've moved from different manufacturers. I've gone from uh, Canon to Nikon to Panasonic to uh, a little bit of Sony, but I wasn't really happy with Sony. I went through to Fujifilm. I've done a bit of Pentax. I've actually pretty much used, and I'm, I've I've even had Leica and I've got Leica as well at the moment and I've gone back and forward between the providers. My recent gear that I've used professionally has been the Canon R R R3 and I've had the wonderful lenses of the 28 to 70 f2 lens which is phenomenally cool and uh, the R3 was a br brilliant camera from Canon, really absolutely brilliant and it was um, also had the lens of say the um, the the 70 to 200, which is a nice little compressed lens. It's pretty cool. The f 2.8. So great camera, great lenses. But what really concerned me with Canon and what this video is all about is they were not opening up their mount, the RF mount, to the third-party companies. And I think that's a very greedy maneuver from Canon. And I think that was an absolute mistake because it led to all the other manufacturers catching up, building a very massive lens lineup, and Canon's lost its footage. It's lost its ability in the industry. It's lost its capability in terms of uh, the majority of people using the cameras, and now they've left the foot in for Sony users and Nikon users, or Nikon, and Fujifilm and Panasonic and Lumix, which is, it's a bad mistake. Now, Canon doesn't see this because Canon is a Japanese company. I mean, it's it's very, very powerful in those countries. But you know what? I've been to the last uh, three photography shows, videography shows, and Canon has been the least busy. In fact, in some cases, it's been zero people going to the stands, which really outlines the problem that Canon has. And that is, it's fact that there's a couple of things. First of all, the products are, they're amazing. And I have no fault to tell about the Canon products. RF Canon, uh, the lenses, the cameras, they're all fantastic. The R5, the, R, the R3, the new R5 II, the R1 that's going to be released. I mean, they're wonderful. And of course, the lenses have always been great. But the, the fact that they didn't open up the mount to the RF mount to other manufacturers is, is a mistake. Because they could have given Sigma and they could have given uh, Tamron or Tokina really, really good footings because they're incredible lens manufacturers which was an absolute mistake. And then it just let all the other companies come into the into the playing field. And now Panasonic Lumix has got incredible full frame lenses with the L mount. Um, Nikon has surpassed them when it comes to lenses because there are incredible lenses on Nikon. And um, with regards to Fujifilm and all their camera gear and all that, I mean, and even um, Pentax and it, they've, they've got everything they need. And uh, let me not even talk about Sony because Sony has gone way past everybody when it comes to lens selection. So. Canon's lost its footage, and it led me to the beginning of this year reevaluate my gear. And I, I carry a Leica Q3 for my personal day-to-day -day, uh, photography, street photography, that kind of thing. And the Leica Q3 is an incredible camera, and it's a great camera for travel, and I love that for that. Now, it is not a cheap camera, and of course, it is my present to myself that I made, which is fine for me, and I'm ca I'm happy to keep that for the rest of my life. However, it doesn't do the professional work for me and it won't, all right? So what do I use? So at the beginning of this year, I decided to leave Canon. And it was a pretty big deal for me because I had pretty decent gear from them. Now, 
what did I go back to? Well, for many years I've been bouncing around between Canon, Fujifilm, Nikon and Panasonic Lumix. I still use Panasonic Lumix for my videography, so I'm filming you on Panasonic right now. And I will always stick to that when it comes to video, because I think they're the best in video. Now, when it comes to the gear that I use professionally for my wedding photography, my portraits, my uh, event uh, photography, my corporate photography, and just my landscapes, I and pretty much anything else that I shoot, because there's nothing that I cannot photograph. I mean, I'm usually pretty big at that, and I can photograph anything. I've been doing this for a long time, and I also do video as well. So what do I, what gear do I use professionally? Well, what I decided to do at the beginning of this year is to move ahead and actually go back to what I truly loved, and that is the skin tonality of photographs and the ability to really do incredible video, but pretty much have an, uh, the best hybrid possible solution I can think of and I decided to go back to Nikon and I moved over to the Nikon Z8 so this is my gear currently right now yes I've put a uh, an actual uh, grip onto the Nikon Z8 because it makes it look and feel like my Z9 or that I used to have because I, I moved away from the Z9 and I've got my little Z8 okay so I, I, little, I use a little Z8 and that's my my gear at the moment and what I decided to do is to stick to Nikon because of the ability of uh, what I can get out of these these cameras and I have native glass for Nikon but what I decided to also do is uh, try my hand out on the Tamron 35 to 180 millimeter f2 to f2.8 and it blows my mind the results I can get with this. I mean I just need one lens on this camera and I'm done. I'm literally done. So the idea of a camera like this being able to shoot pretty much anything and uh, I can I can do everything with this camera. I can do video, I can do sports photography, I can do landscapes, I can do portraits, I can do you name it, I can do almost everything with this. In fact, it's I haven't found any type of photography that I cannot do anything with this. And, um, okay, I wouldn't use this kind of lens if I was going to do sort of bird photography and really impressive sort of nature and, and that kind of thing. But I, that's what I use. And I've got, I've got nice lens filters in front of this. And uh, stunning camera. Absolutely brilliant. The Z8 from Nikon has been the revolutionary change. It, it reminds me of putting a D6 from the D DSLR days together with a D500. And, and, and having the D850's capabilities, but even more. And uh, it completely 100% surpasses Canon R3's. I mean, the Z8 will absolutely uh, devastate the Canon R3. And the autofocus is fantastic. The video is even better than Canon. And that's saying a lot because I've never been able to say that before. I truly have not been able to do that in the past, but now I can shoot 8K video quite comfortably without a problem. And um, yeah, once you get a decent card, and yeah, I've got terabyte cards and uh, the express cards and the SD card slots, and I can shoot easily well over sort of 45 minutes when it comes to 8K, which is more than enough for 8K. When it comes to 4K, it's just as long as i got a battery and yeah, I've got unlimited recording. So it's fantastic for me. But when it comes to the photography side of things, I cannot beat three things that Nikon can do with any other camera. Like Nikon's best at a couple of things. It does everything else that all the other manufacturers can do. But when Nikon excels, and there's no other camera manufacturer that can do this right. And I've tried all of them, okay, including Sony, even the Sony A93. And what Nikon does exceptionally well is skin tonality in people. It's untouchable when it comes to skin tonality. And now their colors are incredible. So they're definitely on par with Canon colors. Sony colors have never been great. And Fujifilm have been phenomenal colors. But, you know, that's crop sensor. So as a full frame, it's fantastic. The Z9 as a camera is obviously the ultimate type of camera, right? But I don't necessarily need the Z9 size. So when I don't need the grip, I just take the grip off and I can just pull it off and I can have a smaller camera that I can carry around with. So usually when I travel now, I'm going to take my Z8 and I'm going to take this uh, um, uh, 35 to 150 from Tamron, which is an F2 to 2.8, and I can shoot anything and I just take this grip off to carry my, my, my batteries and then I'm done because the battery will last me an entire day and I've got three batteries more than enough plus it's got USB-C two USB-C slots which is incredible and um, 
yeah i don't need any other camera and i can shoot anything with it so the z the z9 is a great camera but the problem is that the, the battery grip is a unibody so it's not ideal for me so that's why i chose the z8 and the z8 is a baby z9 and there's there's better features on the z8 there's no doubt about it now i do also shoot landscapes and i do shoot sort of night photography and I've looked at all the Nikon gear and it's great. Don't get me wrong. I think it's fantastic as in lenses. They've got amazing lenses. And I think when you see a Nikon lens that does something like an F 1.8, it's actually really b shooting above its belt. So it's it's in, its, in essence, not really a 1.8. It's probably right down to a 1.4. That's the kind of quality I get out of the lenses. Whereas if I look at the Nikon lens at a 1.8 and then I compare the Canon to the 1.2s and 1.4s, Canon are bazookas, absolute bazooka lenses, whereas Nikon, they're nice and small and they're compact and they might say the 1.8s, but they're definitely shooting better than 1.8. You can see the clarity. You can see the clarity a mile away in Nikon. And the night photography and the landscapes, I didn't choose to go Nikon F, uh, the, the, the mount because the idea of Nikon is they're great, but I think they're just it's not really necessary and at the end of the day i've compared different lenses and i decided to move on to a viltrox lens this is the viltrox 16 millimeter f 1.8 z lens for the z mount and i tell you i've tried the nikon lenses against this viltrox lens and for my landscape stuff it's untouchable it's an unbelievable lens it's sharp end to end corner to corner so it's like quite incredible and as a 16 millimeter i get enough width when i want landscapes and at the same time i can do the classic sort of uh, night photography which is better in this lens than it is in the nikon lens even though nikon may not necessarily be an f1 point um sort of 1.8 it might be lower than one goes to 1.4 it doesn't matter because i usually have to stop that up to 1.8 anyway so when i compared the two together the viltrox outperformed and it's less than half the price so i thought great idea and it's pretty good lens i love the lens it's got a zoom capability as well function buttons i think it's a great lens then comes down to the sports shooting the bird photography if i'm going to be doing it which i do occasionally uh all sorts of sort of long distance kind of photography i've been looking at many lenses and i've been contemplating looking at which lenses I wanted to go for. And this is where I decided to go Nikkor, as in go to Nikon. And there's many lenses that are great, but this particular lens is an absolute dream to use. It may look big, it's only because the lens hood is pretty big, but it's got an internal zoom capability, which I think is stunning. And this is the 180 to 600 Nikkor, all right? And, uh, it's just stunning an absolute stunning of a beast okay absolute stunning beast yes i've put in the camouflage um wrap around it the, the neoprene lap wrap and uh, the great thing is i mean if i take the lens hood off you can see that actually it's not that bad on the camera it's actually not that bad but the funny thing is about this lens that it's actually surprisingly light a lot of people sort of misunderstand this but here's the other thing about the lens it focuses internally so it doesn't zoom out so it's focusing internally, okay, and it doesn't zoom out. But here's the thing, because it's focusing internally, okay, it's also got a very short throw for focus. That's that's the throw it has, and it doesn't have to be like if I don't if I'm holding this thing here, I don't have to do too much with my hand to actually focus. I don't have to do too much with the focus, and it's an incredible, incredible beast of a lens. And the kind of photography that I'm pulling out with this particular camera and lens, the Nikon Z8 with the this particular lens, the 180 to 600 millimeters, 180 to 600. By the way, I can take a teleconverter if I want to do this. Once I once I put this on a camera, I mean this is this is just an incredible lens. And I'm definitely going to be taking this to Iceland and all the different sort of locations I'm going to go to for massive landscapes because I won't need the shorter lenses. This is the lens I'm going to take. I probably won't take my Tamron uh, uh, 35 to 1, uh, 180. I'll probably stick to the 16 Viltrox with me and then I'll have this lens when I do the long sort of landscapes and when I do the close-up landscapes with this. And I think this as a lens is so cool so well designed the i mean the only thing that i have to fault on this is they should have put an arca swiss plate on it but i mean i usually i usually don't put this on a tripod and if i do i won't be using a tripod i'll use a monopod 
So at the end of the day, this collar actually comes off. I usually take the collar off and um, shoot without the collar. But a stunning, absolutely stunning lens. And its capability is just unbelievable on the Nikon Z8. So I'll usually... I usually put the hood on because obviously I want to protect it. But when I'm using this on the Nikon, uh, it's just an absolute dream to use. And of course, you know, with a Z8, you don't need to put on the grip. I mean, at the end of the day, I can just take the grip off, but it does give me a bit of balance. So that is the reason why I went to Nikon, because I get better skin tonality. I have better lenses than Canon, and there's no doubt about it. The, can the, the Canon lenses are amazing. Don't get me wrong. I think they were stunning, especially the 28 to 70 is fantastic lens. But the thing is, it's too big, right? And considering that the 28 to 70 F2 is even bigger than this lens over here, which is a 35 to 180, and the other one was an F2 lens. This is an F2 to 2.8. This is 35 to 180, though. Right, so I'm getting almost double the distance with this Tamron lens, and I'm overachieving with this lens compared to that one from Canon, the RF lens. So this is an unbelie unbelievable beauty of a combination. The Z8 with the Tamron 35 to 180. I think that's just the the 90 percent of the time on the on the camera, and this will be my landscapes and and sort of um, night photography. And of course, I have my little miniature bazooka that I can do for wildlife, nature, and uh, sort of long distance shots, and even sports, because this would be incredible for sports. So that's my current gear, and I do have a number of other lenses that I use, which are mostly on the vintage side, but I decided to move to Nikon, yes, because skin tonality, lens lineup, and the third thing is, this thing shoots in the dark, seriously. It is the one thing about Nikon that I love, and that is it's a marsupial. This thing can see in the dark. The Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z6 II, the Nikon Z7 II, although not so much the Z7 II, the Nikon Z9, uh, and now with the new ones, the Nikon Z6 III. Unbelievable cameras at night. I mean, the low light capabilities are just absolutely blisteringly stunning. And the fact that this is a mini Z9, but with the 45 megapixels, and it can handle low light incredibly well, even better than the Z7 II and better than the Z6 II and Z6 III, even the Z6 III is brand new. It's And the Z6 III, look, it's got lower pixels, so it's 24 megapixels, so it will be a little bit better in low light when it comes to video, but not necessarily photography. So I don't really care about that because I use lighting most of the time in my video. So the, the idea is because of the skin tonality, lens lineup, and the fact that Nikon can truly shoot in the dark. And I've got everything possible conceivable I can think of. Now, this is the professional gear I'll be using. And I've sold all my Canon gear. The only Canon product I've actually kept is my Nikon, uh, my Canon P1000 printer, which I love that printer because it does great A2 printing, which I use for my customers. But at the end of the day, uh, this is the new lens that I've been that I received this week, and I'm definitely going to go and try that out. I'm going to a location that has birds. It's going to be fantastic, and I'm also going to shoot a McLaren race with this when it comes to sports shooting. There's a football match that's coming up and a rugby match as well, so that's pretty, going to be pretty awesome. But the everyday sort of lens will be my Tamron. So the idea is now my professional gear has gone back to Nikon full frame. And I'm using the Z8, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. And then I've got my sideline uh, on the side, just in case. Secondary system, I use the Leica Q3, because that is an equally powerful system. You know, it's got 60 megapixels on the 28 millimeter. It can do uh, 35 millimeter, 45 millimeter to 50 millimeter, 60 and 90. Obviously dropping in pixels, but at the same time, you know, I can equalize the clarity and the quality of the images with my Nikon and sometimes obviously depending on the zoom I'm using Nikon is just better so that's my professional gear I'm now officially a Leica Q3 shooter and a Nikon Z8 with Nikon lenses um, uh, Tamron lenses and Viltrox lenses and absolutely incredible gear I did make a small modification I did modify the eye cup because I wanted a slightly bigger eye cup and of course I got the grip which I actually ordered directly from uh, Japan and it arrived ahead of time so I didn't have to order it in a retail store and um, it's just brilliant and I have um, 
the camera the camera store that i have to uh, uh talk about which really helped me to push this forward is the camera center in cardiff in wales thank you guys you guys are amazing you're awesome uh the best camera store i've ever worked with because i worked with many wex photography park cameras they're all great but camera center uk when it comes to the wales office and newport guys the welsh guys they know their stuff man they know exactly what they're doing with the gear and they helped me transition over from the canon gear over to nikon and i didn't lose any money which was great and at the same time it was an easy transition and that was that was fantastic to see there is one other lens that i'm going to be looking at i do need to get my hands on it it's going to be the 85 millimeter not because i need it it's because i want it so at the end of the day i'll probably go for that but what I'm able to do with this Tamron 35 to 180 right now at 2 and f2.8 is absolutely stunning. And I may not go that way. I may not go for the 85 because this lens is operating at a prime level. I've always been a prime lens shooter, always, including things like Fujifilm um, and Panasonic. But these lenses now are performing as prime. So there's no real argument anymore about prime versus uh, the idea of zoom lenses. The only thing is, of course, your bokeh, your out of focus behind you. But then, you know, just put the subject further away from the background and you get the same feelings, the same sort of view. Now, this lens has got incredible bokeh because of the distance it can deal with. The 35 to 180 has got incredible bokeh. It's an F2, right? So that's stunning. The Viltrox. This is a 16 millimeter. You're not going to really achieve any kind of bokeh. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to be ultra sharp at night and also do great landscapes. So if I'm going to do landscapes, I probably won't leave it at 1.8. I'll probably do it at f4 or something like that. Now, let me give you the sweet spots of these lenses. So this lens, the Viltrox 16 millimeter f1.8 Z lens, its perfect sweet spot is f4. Or if you have ability to have additional more light, which is what I have with my Z8, I like to shoot this at f6.3. But it depends on the low light. If it's really low light, I'll just go to 1.8. I'll just drop right down to 1.8. Like at night, I'll do 1.8 as far as I can, right? The Tamron 35 to 180, the sweet spot is f2.8. So it's literally best at, because it says it's an f2 to 2.8. Once you hit 2.8, it's sharp everywhere on every single range from 35 all the way to 180 so that's stunning because i just dropped to f2.8 and i'm done and when i want to get a little bit of extra bokeh i go down to the f2 when i'm at the 35 millimeter and i can handle a portrait quite easily i do prefer however portraits are just over 100 millimeters i think they're best and then when it comes to this lens i've shot this for about a week uh photos are going to be re released soon this lens at the one 80 all the way to the 600 the ultimate distance the best the sort of sweet spot for this distance is just over 300 millimeters it's stunning at 400 it's still sharp at 600 it's a little soft just in the corners but it's still always sharp in the center of the frame so if you know how to shoot correctly you're not going to go wrong with this lens and it's got stunning bokeh absolutely stunning bokeh on this lens and because it's internal zooming there's no faffing around on tripods and monopods you don't lose the weight distribution because you don't have a bazooka that's coming out and going back in again like canon does stupidly right so this is internal zooming and it's fantastic and it's the nikor version and man i tell you the reach that i can get with this 600 millimeter lens is just absolutely stunning and i don't want to go for green and brown kind of like camouflage i like the color black it's my favorite so is red those two colors are my favorite colors so i decided to stick to the, the this kind of camouflage with obviously my signature range of red bands because the red bands sort of signify my camera gear and uh, what i use and uh, i also use sort of red filters just because i can clearly see my lenses from a mile away if i'm working with a big team so yeah i'm back nikon and i'm back with a vengeance i've created some really great shots with instagram and my clients are loving the results and uh what can i say i finally can honestly say that nikon has not only caught up in the industry including video and including autofocus, but they've created a camera, the Nikon Z8, they've created a Z8 
which is an incredible feat between the Z6 twos, the Z6 threes, and the Z9, and the Z7 II all together. It's kind of like a marriage of all of them. But what they've done is they've given it the capabilities of low light with like the D500 or the D6, and they've given it an ability to have the megapixels of say, you know, the classic sort of uh, Z7 twos and Z9s. And same as Canon's, the, the 45 megapixels is incredible. The bracketing on here, the multi-exposure bracketing is stunning. The speed of this camera for number of photo shoots. I mean, I can do 20 frames a second, do 120 frames a second. I go crazy with this. But I tend to sit down to 10 frames a second. I think I'm pretty comfortable with that. When I'm doing really high speed sports and that, I'll drop to 20 frames a second. But, well, I'll pick up to 20 frames a second. But usually I'm at 10 frames a second. But if I'm doing portraits, I'll drop down to four to five because I want to make sure I capture a little bit of motion sometimes and if not I can capture really sharp photos and I have an incredible amount of keeping files like I don't have losses in files it really is difficult for this camera to lose focus it really is difficult and I think this is the ultimate hybrid camera I don't think you can get a better hybrid than this I've used a lot of Fujifilm cameras, I love the X-T5s and X-T3s, I love the the, uh, the the Pentax cameras, I love the Sony cameras, I love um, not so much the Sony as much as all the others, but I do love their technology, uh, the Panasonic cameras, the Canon cameras, they're all great, but when it comes to hybrid, being able to shoot video and, and photography very quickly and having great menu systems, Nikon, you have surpassed my expectations and now that I, they've gone ahead and purchased red and they brought it into the fold i can imagine i really can imagine what you guys are going to be capable of doing i would love to see a nikon red combo camera it'll be fantastic eh? i mean the video is incredible on this already but can you imagine red technology inside a nikon camera and then of course boosting the, the red video together with the photography from nikon what a winning combination so I just wanted to make this quick and a short little video and um, give you guys an update on my gear and what I have. And uh, yeah, just let you know, I'm back to Nikon and I'm much happier. I was ecstatically using Canon for a year recently with the Canon R3, but I really battled with the lenses. I truly did. They were just too big for me. And as great as the R3 is, which is stunning, I wasn't able to release the, obviously, because it was a unibody, I wasn't able to release the actual grip and use it without a grip. Because if I hold, if I hold the Nikon camera in my hand here, it's perfectly fitting just underneath, just at the right level, and I don't need the grip. You see, my finger is right there. I don't need the actual grip, which is really extending out. I actually don't need the grip. So at the end of the day, I can just take the grip out. And this camera then is really light with this lens, I just carry a little bag with putting this this uh, Z8 with a lens and I don't even carry the grip with me when I travel and I can shoot 100% of the photography that I need. And then if I want to drop down and give myself a bit more distance with this, it's got the crop mode and I can go from the 35 to 150, I can go all the way to close to 200, 300, even close to 300 millimeters when I go to crop sensor, which is... Fine, I lose instead of 45 megapixels, I get 20, 28, 30, somewhere around there, which is crazy, man. I mean, by the way, when you watch a photography or video on like 4K screens or 8K screens, you're only looking at 4 to 10 megapixels uh, photography and videography. You're not looking at anything higher than that. So at the end of the day, if this thing's still doing 33 close megapixels at the crop sensor mode, phew, I can print those out billboard size, no problem. So... This argument of megapixels versus, you know, what do you need in that? You really only need 24, but a nice sweet spot would be the 33. So this is where I think Nikon Z8 has done an incredible job. Just in general, all the Nikon cameras have done a phenomenal job. And even the Z6 III is a fantastic camera. It's got some nice features that maybe none of the other cameras have, but it's, to me, a bit limiting when it comes to the pixels. Phenomenal for video, I agree, but I want a hybrid, and that's why I chose the Z8, okay? That's why I chose the Z8, because it's truly a hybrid. And I use the Godox little small X3 flash little blocks, uh, which are pretty cool. And that allows me to shoot all my Godox lights. So I don't have to change any of that, which is great. I just had to keep on my lighting and I just bought a little a Godox X3 little trigger, which is a little square trigger. Fantastic little thing. I think it's, it's brilliant. And I 
have my backup camera as a Leica Q3 and it's fantastic. So that's my progress update. Thank you for listening. Once again, it's Demetrius Zakropoulos here for, and I know it's a complicated name, from OB Pixel and uh, telling you that I am back to Nikon. That's the professional gear I use. And uh, you can find my details on obphoto, obiphoto.com. Uh, I have all my information on there, all the types of things that I can shoot. And I have some openings available at the moment for summertime for anybody who's interested in portraits and potentially things like weddings. Uh, I'm pretty busy though, so um, get in touch with me and I can always make arrangements. Otherwise, Nikon, well done. Well done. You have managed to convert me back to Nikon for the third time in my entire life. I'm now back to Nikon. And I, I must admit, this Z8 is going to keep me going for quite some time. And the lenses are incredible. Uh, you know, they, they're stunning. I may actually potentially get another Z8 as a secondary body. I think, who knows, I might just do that. But my Leica Q3 is a very capable camera. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'd probably keep that with my, my Zs when I'm doing weddings because my Leica Q3 would be the secret weapon. Uh, just in case I want to pull off something really crazy and interesting. Whereas, and it's a little bit more creative. Whereas this will be pretty much the bread and butter for most things. And it's a tank. This thing, I, I can drop it anywhere. I can put it in water. It doesn't matter. The thing is, the Nikon cameras were designed to last. And incredible value. Absolutely incredible price today for Nikon cameras. So Nikon, thank you. Well done. And for everybody who supports me on my channel, thank you for subscribing. Uh, those of you brand new to my channel, hey, a subscription doesn't cost you anything. It'll be amazing if you do. I'd appreciate it. Don't need any other support. A little click just helps the algorithm, helps people understand the videos I make and, and pushes the algorithm so they can actually get my videos closer to more people. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of stuff you shoot with. Uh, if you want some insights into the Nikon gear and just in general photography, I will be making some live streams talking about things that we do in photography and just my experience and everything, experience in the gear, things that you might have shortfalls, maybe you're not familiar with something. I don't want to do tech reviews and gear reviews and all that. I'm, I'm live, real live sort of uh, experience based kind of shooting. I'm seriously technical as a person. I could easily make incredibly technical videos on this content and this type of gear, but it, it, it bores me. I'd rather be more creative. So let me know what you think. And otherwise, thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. And Demetrius here again from Obi Pixel. And today, my brand, obiphoto.com, signing out.